بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من آية 258 الله سبحانه وتعالى ساز أفتر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألم تر إلى الذي حاج إبراهيم في ربه أن آتاه الله الملك إذ قال إبراهيم ربي الذي يحيي ويميت قال أنا أحيي وأميت قال إبراهيم فإن الله يأتي بالشمس من المشرق فأت بها من المغرب فبهت الذي كفر والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين um, And so starting just with the words of the ayah and, and the translation of their meanings ألم ترى Do you not see? Right? Do you not see? And we said here um, this isn't a literal meaning of sight because um, the Prophet وسلم, is centuries after Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, right? If you say, did you not see the one that Ibrahim, right, Allah, when Ibrahim challenged this, you know, engaged in a dialogue with this man, how can you see him? This was centuries ago, right? And so clearly it's not a literal meaning of sight. Um, uh, and so the scholars, they say it's one of two. For one is uh, Basiratul Qalbiyah or Basiratul Qalbiyah is to see with your heart. Do you not see the, the lesson, the truth in the story of Ibrahim with this king? Or the other one is, is that do you not see is a metaphor, do you not know? Right? Because sight is often used as knowing in replace of, of knowing. So here Alam Tara is a metaphor for saying Alam Ta'lam, do you not know? And so, and, and so the sight is used here because of how obvious the lesson in the, the story is. When something is obvious, like, do you not see this? Like, you must be blind, right? You must be blind to the truth. And so there's a powerful kind of message in, in the ayah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you not see? Like, this, the truth in the story is very obvious. Only an arrogant disbeliever would reject the lesson in the story, right? And so the, the story, and so the ayah uses this powerful way of, 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 of really make showing the, uh, uh, the truth and the lesson of this, of this story. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِي حَاجَّ Ibrahim. Do you not see or have you not seen إِلَى الَّذِي the one حَاجَّ uh, Ibrahim? who debated or disputed Ibrahim fi rabbih about his lord or uh, about his lord an atahu Allah al-mulk so this man is debating Ibrahim alayhi salam about Allah ta'ala um, and, and of course here the, uh, the, mention, the ayah gives a description of this man um, for the reason that God had given him kingdom an atahu Allah al-mulk and so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating a, a link between the arrogance of this man and the kingdom he's been given. This man has become so arrogant that he is challenging Ibrahim about the truth and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he has power. And subhanAllah, right, there are very few people in human history that have remained fair, truthful, and righteous while in, position, while in possession of power. Very rarely do you find people who have power and are righteous. Rather, the Quran says the nature of human being is the, is, is the opposite. Human being becomes a transgressor when he becomes self-sufficient. The more wealthy, the more powerful, the more independent, the more capable, the more intelligent, the more, uh, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. The more possessions a person has, the more self, uh, 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 the more they are um, inflated, and the more they inflate their ego. And the scholars, they say the nafs of the human being is, is such that if it, was to keep, if it was to keep being given everything it desires and wants, it would eventually reach a stage that Pharaoh reached. Where the nafs would say, I am God, worship me. That's the danger of the nafs, right? Because in the nafsa, la amaratun bisu. Right? The nafs in all of us, are, the nafs, if we want to translate it, we can say our ego. 
right? The ego in all of us, the desires, the, the wants, the, the, these, the, these, these, you know, uh, uh, this human animalistic traits that we have in all of us has the potential of becoming like a pharaoh, right? Except the one who purifies himself who purifies himself with knowledge and iman and righteous deeds and humbles himself before Allah, if a person doesn't do that, then their nafs can lead, to, can, can lead them to a place where they become either completely lost with their desires, and if they become powerful, they become so intoxicated with their desires, they feel that I am divine myself and I should be worshipped. I should be the subject of people's attention and people's appreciation and people's praise. And so... And so the ayah is bringing that, that, that lesson here about the dangers of the nafs and how power had corrupted this man. That, and, and for that reason, right, the Prophet ﷺ says that we don't ask for power. We don't seek power. And we don't give it to anyone who seeks it. Because it's already a sign that they've been corrupted. When a person desires power and they seek power, very rarely can a person seek power when they are confident of their capability and ability to establish the command of Allah and they don't see anyone else able to perform their obligation as well as them. They feel that they are skilled like Yusuf Very rarely can a person say, give me a position of power, give me that title, let me run these affairs because I am confident I have the skills and the knowledge and I know that I'm, I'll, I'll qualify all those other people, and I know that if you don't put me in position of power, there will be harm and, con and, 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 and bad consequences as a result of my absence from that position. But that takes extreme knowledge and confidence and skill to make such a claim. Otherwise, we don't seek power. Right? We don't want power. And so here, the ayahs bring in this relationship about the dangers of hukm. The dangers of power. And atahu Allah al He was disputing Ibrahim alayhi salam regarding his Lord. Why? For the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him kingdom. Now, historically, who is this king? Um, our scholars, they mention that this king was in the early life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And, and, and it's often mentioned that he was one of the kings of Babylon. And his name was Nimrud. Nimrud with a dal or Nimrud with a dal, uh, depending on how it was, it, it was, you know, the different pronunciations. And it's mentioned that this king, of course, in Babylon, modern day Babylon is in Iraq. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is also from Iraq. His hometown is in Iraq. And so, it's, it's, the scholars dispute, historians dispute, did Ibrahim encounter this king, this king, after his people attempt, exiled him and attempted to burn him, or did he encounter this king before they tried to burn him alive and then exiled him? And so some said that they, he encountered the king before. When, they, when, when what happened with the, you know, the idols of Ibrahim's village had occurred, and Ibrahim السلام, had destroyed all the idols except the largest one, the people complained to the king about Ibrahim. This is the one position. They say that the village complained to, his town complained about him to the king of Babylon. And they raised a dispute to him. And when Ibrahim was brought to the court of the king, Ibrahim challenged the king. And that's where this dispute, this conversation or this dispute took place. Afterwards, he had returned to his village, and that's, and there they tried to execute him by, you know, by, by burning him. Um, others said, no, that this occurred after his village had exiled him. And after he left, he, Ibrahim السلام, one of his traits was that he was a muhajir. He made many migrations for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once he left his town, he left and he, and, and, and he went to Sham with uh, his wife Sarah and his nephew Lut. And they stayed in Sham and we know that the people of, uh, 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 of Sadum are in Sham in modern day Urdun, Jordan is what is, you know, historians kind of find it to be, uh, or, or, you know, uh, uh, kind of describe it as being. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam went to Palestine, and then uh, he went to uh, Egypt, and that's where, this, uh, where Hajar alayhi salam uh, uh, was uh, uh, given to Ibrahim, and then he also went to Mecca, and he went to Mecca on more than one occasion, right, before the birth of Ismail, when Ismail alayhi salam was an infant, he went there, 
And then when Ismail was a young boy, an adolescent roughly, he went there. And he went there when Ismail was a married man, he went there. And he went there to build the Kaaba with Ismail. So he made at least four migrations to Mecca. He made a migration to Palestine. He made a migration to Jordan, which is all considered Sham. And so Ibrahim السلام, was a prophet of Hijrah. He was known as, some scholars said there are six, you know, or scholars mentioned that there are six migrations of Ibrahim السلام, documented in the Quran, and there could be more. And so some say that one of the early migrations, in, in, in the early uh, uh, kind of phase of, uh, or stage of Ibrahim السلام's life, after being exiled from his people, he went to the king of Babylon. And he encountered him and he gave him da'wah. And the king, this dispute took, uh, took place, the king rejected him and then Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to travel the earth. Uh, Brother Abdul Rahman and then Adnan. Yes. And so, uh, just like Allah Ta'ala, uh, it's like Allah Ta'ala made Pharaoh an example for the world. No. A lot of people don't talk about this. Namrud has also been made an example. Uh, no. Uh, in biblical terms, he's called Nimrod. No. The word Nimrod is also a insult. If no. you want to call somebody a higher level of an idiot, no. you call him a Nimrod. No, no. And uh, so Allah Ta'ala, like this guy who claimed divinity, no. Allah Ta'ala turned his name into an insult. Hey, no. uh, like uh, uh, in basically every, uh, every English speaking country. Yes. If you're like an idiot on steroids, you're a Nimrod. Yeah. Yeah, and so the brother Abdul Rahman mentioned that Nimrud in English is Nimrod, and you know, right? Like Subhanallah, as an ayah, you know, is the, that Nimrod is a description now for a person who's you know like foolish, who's who's immature, who's stupid, um, and so um, and so this is an ayah. This is the ayah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and how He's humiliated this man. He became so arrogant, but Allah made His name such a lowly name, and He's made His name a description and a title of just, you know, stupidity. Um, and subhanAllah, naam, it is, it is, it is an ayah uh, in that regard. Um, and, and so, connecting to that, we know that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he prayed for, uh, uh, for his name to be, uh, to be uh, uh, remembered uh, in, in later generations, right? Uh, uh, what he, uh, he asked subhanAllah ta'ala, um, uh, subhanAllah, وَجَعَلِّي uh, لِسَانًا فِي الْآخِرِينَ Right? Give me uh, lisan, give, me, give my, my name remembrance in later generations. And so to have a, a, a positive remembrance, a righteous remembrance, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah had given Ibrahim alayhi salam this, this ayah. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is the greatest example of this. Because he had the smallest following. Right, out of all out of the MBI, out of the Ulul Azm, out of all of the five Ulul Azm, he had the smallest following. Out of Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, who had the smallest following? Khalilullah Ibrahim. But who has the greatest praise? After Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? And so this was a favor bestowed upon him, and on the opposite, this king, who was so arrogant to ch dispute Ibrahim, Allah made him a, 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 a symbol of, of mockery, right? And a symbol of, of just shame and, and, and silliness.